So I'm absolutely delighted today to be joined by Alia Butt, who is the chair of NHS Staff Voices and a campaigner with Keep Our NHS Public. And over the next bit of time, we're going to be discussing the crisis that's currently facing the NHS and why thousands of people are set to demonstrate in London on March the 11th to um, campaign for a properly funded, publicly owned National Health Service and to campaign for the demands of striking health workers to be met. I can see uh, we now have Alia on the call. Uh, so uh, before we get into any of that, um, it's an absolute pleasure. How are you doing today? I'm good, thank you. Nice, nice to be here. Well, thank you so much for joining. Uh, so to kick us off, hopefully nice and easy. So this big demonstration is being planned on March the 11th. Why are thousands of people set to march through London on that date? I think anybody who who lives in Britain really can see that the NHS is, is really struggling and it's been struggling for a long time. Uh, Pre-pandemic, we had huge vacancies in the NHS. We had uh, really difficult scenes on the wards already. I work in mental health services, so I'm, I'm a psychotherapist. And we haven't seen more staffing since 2009, just by a huge influx in demand and um, a sort of need for, 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 for mental health services, really. In fact, we've seen a huge increase um, in recent years. Obviously, over the pandemic, things got a lot worse. Staff were struggling far more. Um, an example of, of, of the kind of unsafeness of um of of the situation was that you know you usually have one person one nurse working on on a um itu bed uh, or an icu bed and we had one nurse sort of dividing their care between four beds that naturally means very you know it's only common sense really that people are going to suffer um currently we are seeing 500 excess deaths per week. I'm sure people would have heard this statistic. And that basically means that a lot of people are losing their lives where had we been properly funded, had we been properly staffed, we would not be seeing these. You know, obviously, we, we are not immortal beings. People do lose their lives to, to bad health, to ill health. But when you have, you know, the sixth largest economy in the world, you know, we have all of this wealth in this country that we know about, because we know that the wealthy are becoming more wealthy in this country. It's an absolute scandal that we're seeing so many people losing their lives unnecessarily. So I think really what it comes down to is patient safety and the fact that we can't do our jobs properly. Um, and I feel like there's this kind of you know, health workers particularly, but, you know, the NHS is made up of, of many, many workers, not just health workers. You know, there are lots of other people who work in the NHS who are paid far worse than we are, actually. But health workers, I think, are renowned for kind of having this sort of, I don't know, moral blackmail in, where, in, in a way that we feel as though we can't go on strike. We can't withhold our care. But I think what's actually happened is we are we are having to do that. And I think you, you can see it with the Royal College of Nursing. Um, people do not want to go on strike. It's a historical vote to go on strike. Nurses are not ordinarily this way inclined. But as with the rail workers, as with the postal workers, as with all, all, all of the workers that we're seeing going on strike at the moment, we have been pushed to this point. So it's a, it's a really desperate time. I think in the NHS... If we don't fight for it, we are going to lose it. And we we, we can see that now and, and more of the public are seeing that now. And so the, the demonstration on March the 11th, that has a range of demands, but but crucially, it, it, it talks for about demanding proper funding for the health service, which you've talked about, um, making sure that the NHS is reinstated as a fully public service. So uh, abolishing privatisation in the health service and also demanding proper pay for uh, staff in the health service. How are all these things linked together? So if you look at, I mean, we've spoken very, very briefly about resources and the fact that there have been huge cuts to our services, you know, austerity um, and 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 general sort of, you know, this this drive to, to privatise the NHS actually has meant that it has been entirely dismantled, um, systematically pulled apart and pits, parts of it are basically being uh, or, or sort of contracts are being sold off or given to, to private companies that A, don't know how to do the work properly, they don't have the experience, B, they're not particularly interested, they just want to make money, let's be honest, um, and C, it, 
lots of this money is going into these companies and not coming back into the NHS, which is what usually happens. You know, this is taxpayer money. When it when when you have a publicly funded and a publicly owned service, it means that that money continues to be recycled and utilized by the service instead of being pushed into these sort of into the coffers of, of private companies and profiteers. It's essentially corruption. We've seen it over the uh, pandemic. We've seen billions of pounds being wasted on dodgy PPE contracts. We've seen people like these examples like Baroness Moan, you know, people who have been making lots of money. We saw, for example, I mean, I'm sure people know all of, uh, lots of these examples, but I, I guess the most kind of outrageous ones are sort of, you know, uh, I think it was um, the pub landlord of Matt Hancock who just texted him and said, yo, can I have, can I, you know, can I, can I do, can I have a contract for PPE? And his company was, um, he, his company essentially made cups or provided cups, plastic cups and, and paper cups to uh, festivals. They don't know the first thing about PPE. And we had the highest number of health worker deaths in Europe. These things are very connected. Privatization is very connected to the fact that workers are not paid enough because this is essentially our money, public, public, this is public's money. Many of the workers are the public. You know, we are part of the public. We're all part of the same group of people. Um, so, so these things are are really connected, and it basically means that our patients don't get the care. Um, we've got these huge gaps in our staffing groups. We haven't, I mean, again, I work in mental health services. We haven't had any more staff since 2009 in, in, our, um, in, in our kind of departments. We've seen a third of our services cut before the pandemic. So all of this stuff really, really um, is connected. But I think what's also really connected is the fact that the wealthier are getting wealthier. Um, companies and corporations are making lots of money from the discontent and suffering of, of, of the general public. And, you know, the fact that we've seen the highest kind of increase in, in disparity of wealth over the past few years, you know, the fact that we've seen, um, you know, when, when Rishi Sunak was chancellor, there were these huge tax breaks. I think 7.3 billion pounds um, were allocated to banks, essentially, and people who work within banks. So the priorities are all messed up, I think. And actually, we are seeing a redistribution of wealth. It's going the wrong way. People are dying. And it's it's, it's really just got to stop. So over the last few months, what we've seen, I think, is um, there's been a recognition that the there's a massive crisis in the health service, although uh, tellingly, the government refuses to use that word. Um, but we've seen um, in response to that, a number of political figures saying that, well, to deal with the backlogs, to deal with you know the ambulance waiting times, what we need more of is utilising the private sector, i.e. private hospitals or private ambulance services, uh, to plug the gaps. And you've seen that um, from the uh, Labour front bench, from West Streeting and from others. Um, why are they wrong? What do you make of that argument? I think it's really quite disappointing. I was, I mean, I would say heartbroken, but I think, uh, I mean, I think we've, we've, we've all kind of really had to confront the reality of the situation that a lot of the politicians are not on the side of the public. Um, so it, it was very, very hard to hear and to read about West Streeting and Keir Starmer, in fact, suggesting that privatisation is the answer when we know the public are becoming more and more aware that it's not the answer. When when you have a problem that is creating, um, you know, uh, a staffing crisis, that is creating a resource crisis, that is creating a crisis that means that people are dying unnecessarily, using that same structure to then fix the problem, it doesn't really make sense. And and that's and that's the the reality. I think I think. The public have been bamboozled for a very, very long time. And I think people have been encouraged to think that privatization is the answer. But when, even when you look at outsourcing of staff, you know, I, I, that, that means that we're paying seven times more for staff um, who could just be in-house. We could just be using staff within the NHS. But, you know, it, it's the oldest trick in the book, really. Break down infrastructure and then say, oh, it's not working. 
And that's exactly what they've done with the NHS. They're proposing a solution that is actually the problem. It's not going to work. We are essentially going to lose the NHS if this continues. We're going to end up with a, uh, an, an American style healthcare service and people won't be able to get the care that they need. We are already seeing that people are not getting the care that they need. The, the, the disasters in the ambulance services are very much linked to privatization because we are not uh, properly funding services that could be um, providing more. You know, we, we've got this huge um, lack of beds. There are lots of beds in the private sector and we're having to buy them back. So you can just see what's going on, can't you? It, it's basically uh, creating a problem and then and then posing the solution you know, with the same problem. It, it doesn't make any sense and it's just going to continue leaking money out of the NHS and this is taxpayer money. So I think, you know, what's really interesting um, and quite, um, uh, you know, it, it makes me, it fills me with some optimism is that we've seen rail workers and, and that's not just train drivers, that's lots of different people who keep the trains running as with the NHS. So we've seen this group of workers coming out and saying, this is unsustainable. We really need to, 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 to basically hold the government accountable where they're refusing to do what's right for the workers and for the public. The public are having to pay so much money to use trains and the train services are making lots of money. Uh, it's just not being seen by the majority of the workers exactly the same as in the NHS, exactly the same as in the postal services. So we're seeing lots of workers coming out and saying, this is not sustainable. You guys have really got to stop with this horribly corrupt way that you're running services. Um, we've now seen midwives, ambulance uh, workers, essentially paramedics, um, physiotherapists, nurses, lots of different people in the NHS inspiring one another and saying this is completely unsustainable um, and we're seeing lots and lots of strikes popping up what we really need is coordination I, I would suggest not just across uh, union but across industry and I think we might even see that uh, moving forward I really really hope so this this sort of demonstration that we are organizing for March 11th I think is really important we need to get as many people there as possible and it's not just to show the public or show the government, it's also to show the NHS workers that the public support us and stand with these workers who are going on strike. They're getting a lot of abuse. You know, it's not easy to withhold care. I, I do feel, and maybe wrongly, that health workers and NHS workers are in a slightly different position where there is this real difficulty of saying, okay, we're not going to do our job because you you hear from a lot of people you know you people are going to die people are dying already unfortunately we already work in a service where people are not cared for properly and actually the only way to prevent that from happening any further is by holding the government accountable and saying please can you pay us properly we need to retain staff we need to recruit staff these are these these kind of you know i think the government and and mp's including uh, the labor politicians they sort of wax lyrical about we're going to recruit all of this staff where from people are leaving the nhs to go and work in supermarkets perfectly good jobs but they're not they're, they're not going to be in the health service anymore who's going to do those jobs um, so, so it's really important that people do come out on March 11th and show support. And um, and I think it's quite different to, to previous demonstrations because of all of this sort of action that's going on. Um, so it's exciting is not the right word, I think, but something's happening. And and it's uh, yeah, I'm hopeful. So that leads me nicely onto the, the last question I wanted to put to you before I come to some questions from the chat. So there's a general reminder for folks watching, please do pop stuff, uh, any questions in the chat on YouTube. Uh, before we come to those questions, um, over the last decade, there's been, uh, you know, countless marches uh, around the NHS. So, you know, there was uh, mass mobilisations against the Health and Social Care Act in 2012. We've seen, you know, uh, anti-austerity demonstrations uh, that have called for an end to uh, health service cuts, a call to an end to privatisation and so on. Um, I wondered if you could, uh, I guess, give your view on why this demonstration on March the 11th is different and how it can fit in with a broader campaign that can secure the demands that you're calling for. So, yeah, I think I've touched on it a little bit. 
that there's so much going on currently in terms of workers coming out and saying, you know, we need to come together and and we need to sort of work together on this. In the same way, I would sort of suggest that the government do or that, you know, the, the, the wealthy people of this country sort of work together to help each other. I think that's happening more within the working class. And I think when you think about the setting um, under which all of these strikes are taking place, it does make it a little bit easier to imagine their success. I think because we've had all of these horrible cuts in the NHS, um, and I think we've had cuts to all services really that have meant that everything is working in a in a uh, less successful way. Things that people are unhappy, people are not getting that that much for their money, and they don't even have that much money. Wage suppression is rife people are in multiple jobs they are still struggling to put food on the table um you know 40 percent of people who are on universal credit are in jobs this is all quite unusual in this country actually well within the past however many years this is this is something that's happening that hasn't been happening in my lifetime that's for sure um and i think we are becoming more aware of the fact that that taxation of the wealthy is not sufficient. And even the way that it is set up, there are so many loopholes, you know, just look at the politicians, just look at all these countless people who are so wealthy and who are not paying their taxes properly. And then you've got working class people who haven't had a pay rise for 10 years, essentially. Inflation is skyrocketing. So I think the lived experience of general people means that it's very difficult to kind of distract oneself or avoid because life is so hard people can't avoid the reality the consciousness of our general public has changed um so I think it is it is a very different time you know when people are reading about shelled profits having rocketed and and I think you know we all know somebody or we are that somebody who isn't putting on the heating who is looking at their water bill and going you know I mean I I we're all suffering from that same anxiety I think of how are we going to pay our bills this is new, this kind of level of struggle. And I think this level of struggle means that change is, uh, um, it, it's imminent. It's kind of, it's, we, it's unavoidable because we're struggling. You know, we're, we're hearing about uh, elderly people dying of hypothermia when we know that Shell are making billions, billions of pounds. Um, so I guess workers are, are, aren't really able to to live this way. People are unable to live this way. I think it's a it's a really important time. I think if we don't utilize it, if we don't jump on it and say, okay, we we've got to keep this momentum going. We need more coordination. We need much more solidarity. I mean, we we did have some solidarity demonstrations. They were really inspiring the fact that we had so many people out on the streets clapping that's new bus drivers who i thought were getting really angry were you know basically fist pumping people on the march you know people are uh really supportive of workers and how can they not be it's too unfair really what's going on now and it's so obvious so I think it's a different time. I think get out on the streets on March 11th and show your support. I think, as you know, the last thing I want to say on the matter is people are aware because every time they use, they use a, an NHS service, they are struggling to get the care that they need and deserve. And they pay for, we pay for this. This is our money. This is our NHS. Um, and we don't want to lose it. Um, and I think people are realising that we will lose it unless we fight for it. So I've got two final questions for you that have come through in the chat. The first is around the um, the minimum service levels bill, the anti-strike legislation that is currently going through Parliament. And this morning we spoke to, uh, we had Mark Sawatka from the PCS union on the show um, who talked about this and the impact it could have on uh, public services, uh, the workers that staff those services and um, on the trade union movement more broadly. I wondered um, what your thoughts are on that uh, legislation, what the impact you think it will have will be on the NHS and how you think it can be defeated. I think it's a very dangerous suggestion. I mean, the fact that we have the House of Lords 
basically helping working people and saying, you know, th this is actually, we, we can't have people not being able to uh, exercise their democratic right to say that they have, you know, that they don't think something's the right way. I mean, it's it's almost bizarre. So um, I think, you know, we, we have got to fight all of these types of draconian, uh, really, um, really kind of regressive um, policies that, that the, the Conservative Party um, are basically trying to push through, because if we don't, then we are in a really difficult position. I think the way that we do that is by saying, you know, we're going to hold more protests, we're going to go on strike even more. I think that the idea that, you know, we're not going to be able to provide a certain level of care during strikes. This, you know, we should have been worrying about this before. Why weren't they not, why were they not these um kind of these these worries about minimum service and you know how much service we're providing? We we in the NHS have been crying, literally, literally weeping about the fact that we aren't able to give the correct level of service. People, you know, I walk into rooms and people are devastated at the fact that we're not able to give the right care. It's not something that we are unaware of. It's not something that we are proud of or excited about. You know, the fact that we're going on strike and struggling to provide care. But then I think also we have been reorganizing our staffing and, you know, uh, um, de redeploying staff here and there for years now. Um, and that's what we do during a strike as well. That's what we do. We basically do what we've been doing for years. We're very good at it now because we've had to be. So I think, you know, when we consider the fact that A, people are already struggling in the NHS, B, we know in the NHS how to reorganize things and we can reorganize things. Um, I think people can maybe feel slightly more um, uh, kind of not comfortable, but slightly more comforted, I guess, by the fact that you know we've been doing this for ages guys you know and we don't want to either we want to be providing the best care we can um yeah so so i guess we really have to fight these these kind of really backward ideas that people shouldn't be allowed to have any say in the way that they live and people should just work 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 i mean there's a word for that you know that that's not that's not democracy is it when people are forced to 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 um uh, work without being paid properly, you know, without having proper breaks, without being allowed proper sick leave, without um, having any say in the way that they provide that work. It's it's not a good look and it's not a good system. And um, so finally, um, I've got a question that's come in from the chat and uh, a lot of our viewers uh, are uh, members or supporters of the Green Party. And uh, the Green Party conference this year is taking place, unfortunately, on the 10th and 11th of March, the spring conference. So I've got a question that's come in from Elite Sabre Coaching, mm. who has asked. Um, so a lot of us are going to be at spring conference on March the 11th. So what can uh, people who are there do to show solidarity with the marches in London? I think, you know, just I think, first of all, join Keep Our NHS Public which is an important organization that has been fighting um, privatization for many years. Um, join the campaign SOS NHS, have a look at our demands. And if you know, if you can donate, that's really, really helpful. We do a lot of what we do uh, from, you know, without getting any money for it, essentially voluntarily um, on an honorary basis, I guess. But you know we do need money and we we don't we're not we're not a political party or, or anything as such we do take you know we we have to do everything um through donation so if 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 you can afford to donate then please do donate to the cause because that's how we get things going that's how we make our literature that's how we disseminate our literature that's how we help people understand what's going on that's how we fund our marches so the that's where the money goes it goes on these things anyway it goes on basically getting the word out and helping people understand what's going on in the NHS because I think there's a lot of um mystification that we have um through through the through the language that the government used through 
certain um, media outlets and things like that. Um, so if you can donate, if you can join the campaign, join Keep Our Interest Public, that, that would be really, really helpful. And I think really and truly just talking about the NHS and talking about the fact that actually privatisation is going to essentially be the final nail in the coffin. I mean, it's already three ways there, three, three parts there, I would say, three out of four you know, three quarters is what I'm trying to say there, of the way there. And and actually, it we really need to sound this alarm. But, you know, more than the NHS workers, we need the public to be sounding this alarm, I guess is what I would say. Um, so I think maybe at, at, at conference, if you have any opportunity to talk about um, what's going on in the NHS and and talk about Keep Our NHS Public and and just basically um, the campaign SOS NHS, which is, as you said, about pay, about public ownership um, and about sort of staffing and resourcing of the NHS. And th th I think that is that would be really helpful. Brilliant. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. I'll let you get on with the rest of your day, but thank you so much for joining us. It was a pleasure. Thanks for having me.